Hello friends, welcome back, hope you're doing well. I'm in Luminar Neo today and I've got a quick tip and it's around masking. And what I wanna do is show you a really cool way that you can kind of do uh, in Lightroom what you would call like a mask intersection. It's basically a way to combine different masks in order to exclude things um, that you don't want in the, uh, in the mask. It's easier if I show it to you. So um, I included this in my masking masterclass, had a lot of comments and feedback about it. People love this trick. And I shared it in a video probably eight or nine months ago when Mask AI came out, but it's just a really powerful way to give you perfect control. Now, I want to be clear, it only works in certain situations, and I'm going to talk about that. So let's get into it. I've got a photo here, and I'm in the Edits tab. You can see I've used Develop Raw. I use Super Contrast and Color Harmony. So before, after, before, after. Kind of a basic edit. This is a crater in Iceland and I took a photo of it. You know, it's midday, so nothing exciting or dramatic, but it's a good example of how this technique works. So I'm gonna go into Structure AI, and for me, what I wanna do is include Structure AI in all the ground. That would be the mountains and all the crater stuff, but I don't want it in the water or the sky. So normally, uh, without Mask AI, I would come in and just brush it in everywhere. But you might think, well, just use Mask AI, Jim. That's easy, and it is. And a lot of the time, in fact, much of the time, it's really accurate. But there are some photos when it just doesn't really do it. This is one of them. So I'm going to go into Structure AI, and let's say I crank it up, and I'm going to crank it kind of high just so it's easily visible to you. So 48, that's pretty high. That's okay. I'm just playing around here to show you this technique. Um, go into masking and you would say, oh, mask AI, I know what I want to do. I want to grab the mountains and the natural ground. You don't want sky and water because this is positive structure. So I want that in the mountains and the natural ground. So I click on those. I let it figure out what mountains and natural ground are. And then it sticks the, the red overlay, which represents the mask, onto the photo. But hey, look at all the holes in it. It didn't find the things that I want it to find. So I'm going to deselect those because... It didn't work. Um, so I don't want the uh, mask AI because it's not really working for me here. So this is a situation where I would use a linear gradient and I would come in and I would start at the bottom and kind of drag up and kind of fade it off into the distance. I like that smooth gradient zone I talk about a lot with masking. Um, and that linear gradient covers that ground and that mountain area really well. I, I like it a lot, but and this is the but. So this is the gotcha about the technique. It only works when Mask AI doesn't actually grab the things that you necessarily want it to grab. And so in this case, it did not grab the mountains and the natural ground 100%. It got, I don't know, 60, 70% of it, but it didn't cover it well enough for me. Uh, in other words, I would have to get a brush and go in and do a bunch of painting I don't want to do that. There's a quicker way. So the quicker way is what I'm about to show you. In this case, I use a linear gradient. I fade that into the uh, background there. I cover the entire foreground, including the water. Well, I don't want the water to include positive structure because if you've been here before, I like smooth water. I am all about that smooth water. So all you do is you back out of linear gradient. You go into Mask AI and you select water. Now, when I select water, it's going to select the water, but you're not going to be able to tell because I've got the linear gradient already covering the entire foreground, including the water. So just to clarify what I'm doing, linear gradient is covering the entire area, including the water, but I've now just gone into Mask AI and say, hey, identify the water. Well, it does identify the water, but you can't tell because the linear gradient is also covering the water. But the cool thing is, is you select water. Now that I've selected water, and let's assume it identified it correctly, I can now unselect, deselect water, and it pulls it right out. And so now what I have is a essentially perfect mask. I mean, there's a tiny bit around the edge of the pond there where I could clean it up. But essentially what I've done is intersected these masks. So I've got a beautiful mask covering all the natural ground that I want to cover, but it's not covering something that I actually covered with a linear mask because Mask AI did a great job identifying water and once you select it, when you click it again to deselect it, it takes the mask away, including where it overlapped with the linear gradient. So that's a, um, some people call it, including me, uh, call it stack and subtract, but it's a quick and easy and wonderful uh, way to get better control over the masks in your image. But like I said, it only works 
when mask AI doesn't identify some of the core elements. In this case, it did not completely identify mountains and natural ground. So for me, it was quicker to add a linear gradient and then go into mask AI and select the water and then deselect the water. That's the stack and subtract method. And now I've got a great mask and it's not being applied to that water or that sky. I could also go in and just copy that mask, invert it, and then come back with something else if I wanted to do negative structure, for example, in the water and the sky because everything else is already selected with this mask. So copy it, invert it, apply it again in a different filter if you want to apply it to the rest of the photo. Super powerful, super quick, super easy, and it works when Mask AI doesn't perfectly identify certain elements in a photo. So you may have images like this. Experiment, try it out, but it's a great little hack in the masking tool that gives you super great control over, uh, over all your edits. That's it for this one, my friends. Thanks for watching. Hope it helps. If you have any questions, leave them down below. See you in the next video, you guys. Take care. Until next time. Adios.